Hey guys, this is Miss Ludwig. Um, today we are going to be doing our Chem 2 notes on the states of matter. Um, that is on page 5 in your lab notebook. And our main mission today is by the end of this lesson, we should be able to describe the molecular structure of the three states of matter. So first we should talk about, we know that the three main states of matter are solids, liquids, and gases. And um, more specifically, in eighth grade science and chemistry, we want to talk about what do the molecules and atoms, the teeny tiny things that we cannot even see that make up a solid, a liquid, or a gas, how are they acting? What kind of arrangement are they in? Do they have a certain shape? Um, are they full of energy and bouncing all around? Um, so really, that's, that's the focus of our lesson today, is what uh, does the molecular structure or the molecules and atoms that make up a certain substance, how do they act or how do they look? So first we have a solid. A solid has a definite shape and a definite volume. Um, as you can see in the picture here, these little round circles are representing the molecules, the atoms and molecules, the particles that make up a solid. As you can see, they are in this square shape. It's in a round container, but they are in a square shape because they have a certain fixed or definite shape. They also have a fixed or definite volume. Volume is the amount of space something takes up. Um, some examples of solids in your everyday life could be something as small as a breadcrumb um, or as big as a mountain. A mountain is made of solid rock. Um, so in that example, if you think of a rock, a rock has a certain shape and it also takes up a certain amount of space or has a certain volume. Um, and that is because of these particles that make up the rock. If this is a rock or a piece of wood that's in a square shape, uh, the particles on a molecular level that make it up are really, really tightly close, packed together. If you look between these, there's not barely any space in between these particles. Um, and they just barely vibrate in place. They do have energy um, and just ever so slightly vibrate in place, but they can't move a whole lot because they are so tightly packed together. Um, also, the reason that you can't squish a rock, for instance, um, you cannot compress or squish a rock because its particles are so packed closely together that they have nowhere to go. It won't squish or compress. So that is a solid. Um, another example of a solid would be ice. If you freeze water, it turns into ice, which is a solid and it has a very specific shape. Now, there are actually two types of solids. Um, our first type is a crystalline solid. A crystalline solid has a specific shape and is made up of crystals, a crystal structure. Um, they have a repeating pattern and a very specific shape. Um, an example of that right here, this is salt. Salt, if you look at a tiny grain of salt really close up with a magnifying glass, um, or a microscope, you would see that it actually has a very square cubic structure. Um, each little grain of salt is actually like almost exactly the same shape. Um, a lot of gems, like this up here is amethyst, it has a crystal structure. A diamond has a crystal structure. These are examples of crystalline solids. The other type of solid that we have is an amorphous solid. And if we're using our stems, A means without or not, and morph means shape or form. So this means without um, a specific shape or without a specific form. It is still a solid. The particles that make it up are still so tightly close packed together um, and vibrating in place, but they don't have the um, crystalline or a repeating pattern like salt or like a um, gemstone might. Um, examples of an amorphous solid that do not have a regular pattern would be like candle wax or butter or even cotton candy. Um, a lot of these things can, can be shaped or formed into the shape we want them to be, such as butter. You could make butter and mold it or a candle and mold it into any shape that you would like it to be. It would still be a solid, um, but it doesn't have a repeating pattern um, like these crystalline solids do. Here is an example um, that just compares amorphous solids with crystalline solids. My example of an amorphous solid was cotton candy. Um, cotton candy is made of sugar. Sugar does have a crystalline uh, shape normally, but when you create cotton candy, it pulls those particles um, in an irregular pattern. So these little blue circles are the patterns. See some of these over here are really, really close together, and some of these have a little bit more space in between. They're still really close together, um, but it's not a regular. It's kind of mixy-matchy around here. Um, in a crystalline solid, such as table salt, um, it has this, its particles are arranged in very cubic 
structure. Um, everything is spaced perfectly apart from each other. There's no big gaps over here and smaller gaps here. It's all very much the same. So that's the difference in amorphous solid like cotton candy um, or butter or wax versus a crystalline solid like table salt or like table sugar. Um, our next one, our next state of matter or phase of matter, sometimes we call it, is a liquid. Um, a liquid has no definite shape, but it does have a definite volume. What that means is that I can measure the amount of a liquid that I have, but when I pour a liquid into a certain container, it fills the container. It takes the shape of the container. So, um, and then the particles move very freely past each other. As you can see, they're still very close together, but these arrows are representing that these particles or molecules are moving ever so slightly, flowing nicely, smoothly, freely past each other. That's the reason that you can pour a liquid um, because those particles are so close together, they stay together, but they do flow freely past each other. Um, there's not a lot of space in between them. Um, now going back to a liquid taking up a certain container shape. So in this container, it's a pretty wide container. I have the set volume or set amount of liquid in it. If I poured the same amount of liquid into, let's say, a test tube, a really skinny, tall container, all right, it would look like maybe that there was more liquid in there because it might fill that test tube up, but um, it's really just filling the container. It's a tall, skinny container. It's the same amount of liquid, same volume of liquid in a skinny container versus this more shallow round container. So a liquid has no definite shape. It'll take the shape of whatever container you put it in, but it does have a definite volume. You can measure the certain amount of it and that amount does not change. And again, the particles or the molecules flow freely past each other. When we are describing a liquid, uh, we can describe its viscosity or how viscous it is. The viscosity of a liquid is describing a liquid's resistance to flowing, how thick the liquid is and how fast it flows. So think of me, thinking of some different types of liquid, um, <clears throat> honey or syrup, for example, when you try to pour those, they flow very slowly. They're thicker. Um, and so we would say that those fluids, um, a honey or syrup, have high viscosity or they are highly viscous is another way to say it. Um, other liquids like water, vinegar, milk, lemonade, um, these liquids that we think of being kind of thinner and they pour easier or faster, they flow quicker, those have low viscosity um, or they are not as viscous as honey and syrup. So again, viscosity is just a way to describe how fast or how slow a liquid pours or flows. Um, something with a high viscosity like honey or syrup would flow very slowly. Something with a low viscosity would flow very quickly like water or milk. Our last state of matter is gases. A gas does not have a definite shape or a definite volume. Um, gas particles spread apart and they fill all the space that is available. So often gases are a lot of times colorless and odorless. You cannot see them, but they are all over the place. The air you breathe and you're sitting in a room right now is filled with gases, uh, primarily nitrogen, also oxygen, and a bunch of other little gases in there. Um, but gases are made, even though they are invisible, um, are made of tiny little particles. These particles have so much energy. They are bouncing around crazy. Um, they do not want to be close to each other whatsoever. They will spread out as far as they can. In this container, it has a lid on it to contain the gases. And inside of this container, the gases are spread apart and bouncing like crazy all over the place. Um, if I were to take the lid off of that um, container, the gas would come up and it would fill the room around me. Um, for example, if I was doing in chemistry an experiment um, and I had a chemical reaction and a gas was produced, again, most gases are colorless and odorless, so I probably wouldn't see it or smell it. Um, but if I did not do my experiment in a closed system, meaning there's a lid on it so the gas cannot escape, um, it will. It'll fill the room and seemingly disappear. Not really disappear, but um, it would seem like it was missing. Um, so let's see. Let's see if we can guess the state of matter um, or phase of matter. The first picture is of water bottles and you are probably 
almost immediately thinking, oh, well, it's water. Um, what is inside of the bottles, yes, is liquid water, room temperature water. However, we have more than what appears or what you first think of. The bottle that the water is in is plastic. It is a solid. It's actually an amorphous solid. You can mold it and shape it into a certain shape, but it is a solid. The wrapper that is on the bottle is a solid. The cap that is on it is a solid. Um, water bottles are usually filled up almost to the top, but there's a little bit of space. That's not empty space. In that space, there are gases. Um, surrounding these bottles in this room, there are gases. So actually all three states of matter, the liquid water within the bottles, the solid bottle, and then the gas that surrounds it are all present in this picture. Let's try another one. Alrighty, ketchup, right? The ketchup itself, what do you think? Solid, liquid, or gas? It is a liquid, it pours, it will fill the container that you put it in. Um, it is pretty thick and it pours pretty slowly. So would that mean that it has high viscosity or low viscosity? It is high viscosity because it's thick and it flows slowly. Now the container that the ketchup is in, that's a solid, it's paper-ish. Uh, and then around it, of course, we have air, that's a gas. Let's try another. Ooh, Coca-Cola. Um, so I know because we talked about the water example that you're thinking, oh, well, all three states of matter are present here. So the Coca-Cola itself, the soda that you would drink, that is a liquid. It flows, the particles fro flow freely past each other. It is a has a low viscosity because if I were to pour it, it would be thin and flow pretty quickly. Um, the container, of course, that the Coca-Cola is in is made of plastic, and that is a solid. Um, we know that the air around the bottle is a gas. Do you think there's a gas inside the bottle? There is. That's why sodas have bubbles. It's carbonated. That um, when you open it up and it goes, that's gas escaping from the inside of the soda. Next one, we have just a glass coffee cup. Appears to be nothing in it, but we know now that, of course, there is air in there or a gas. Um, the glass cup itself is, of course, a solid. Glass is also an amorphous solid. You can mold it and shape it the way you'd like it to be. Ooh, some french fries. Somebody must have been hungry when they were putting these pictures on here. Um, the container, of course, is a solid. The french fries are solid. There's a gas surrounding it, the air itself. Lava. So this is an example of lava. It is molten or liquid rocks, all right? Rocks from within the earth are melted and then they come up out of the earth's surface and that creates lava. Um, it is a liquid. It is a very thick liquid that flows slowly, which means that it is a highly viscous liquid or has a high viscosity. And the last one is ice. Ice is solid water. Ice is solid. If it is at room temperature, it would be water. And of course, if it's in the air, that would be water vapor. All right, so here's what I need you to do now. Um, in your notes, on page eight, there is a chart that looks exactly like this. It has solids, liquids, and gases, and a few questions. You need to be able to answer these questions in your notes um, about each state of matter, or each phase of matter. So how do the particles act? Um, are they tightly packed and vibrating in place? Are they flowing freely past each other? Are they bouncing like crazy all over and filling whatever space they can get? Um, describe their shape and volume. Do they have a definite shape? Do they have a definite volume? Yes or no? Maybe both. How do the molecules move when they change states? Meaning, if I take solid water, ice, and I melt it, all right, ice is solid, it is packed, it, those particles are very, very, very shortly um, vibrating in place. If I add heat and melt it, it turns to a liquid, and so those molecules would be moving faster. If I took that liquid and heated it up and evaporated it into water vapor, now I've got a gas. Now those molecules are really, really bouncing all over the place. Um, so what happens to the energy when they change states? Is there more or less? If I freeze water or if I boil water and evaporate it, um, how are those particles going to act and move? And what are some examples of a solid, a liquid, and a gas? All right, that's about it. Thank you guys. Make sure you also answer on page five in your notes, there's a picture of a um, solid liquid and a gas. You figure out which one is which based on the arrangement of the particles. Bye guys.